Hey guys, this is the Instant Camera Guy here. Uh, I wanted to do a video today on the rigid bodied series of SX70 cameras. I've already done a few videos explaining how awesome the classic folding design SX70 is, uh, so I wanted to do a video today basically about their more adorable cousin. So, the folding series of SX70, which I just put away, was released in 1972. They were a very expensive uh, and advanced camera for their time, able to take photos on instant film, which would eject straight out the front of the camera. The downside to those models, as awesome as they were, was that they were very expensive, and uh, as a result, didn't sell in incredibly high numbers, although they still were very popular, but there was still a, a sort of section of the market that would have liked instant film, but just couldn't afford it. And so that is where the rigid bodied series comes in. So the rigid bodied series, such as this SX70 One Step, uh, the One Step Plus, and the Pronto, were released in 1977, uh, around Christmas time and were an immediate success. So they cost a fraction of the amount that the folding type could uh, because they were a rigid plastic design that was a lot simpler and a lot more cost effective to make. So a lot of the technology was the same. They used uh, an automatic exposure system which would adjust shutter speed so that you got perfectly exposed photos every time. They spat out instant photos that would develop uh, and the other reason that these were so popular, as well as being nice and cheap, is that they were incredibly easy to use. So, I'll run you through quickly how to use one of these. So, to open up the film door on the side, there's just a little button with an arrow on it. So you push in the direction of the arrow, and it pops out. So, this here is what the film cartridge will look like. When you buy a pack of film, this is what your cartridge is. Obviously, yours would be loaded with film, though, whereas this one's empty. But the batteries that run these cameras are actually built into the packs of film. So I'll have to use this empty pack to demonstrate how one works. So you would slot the film in like so and just close the door. Now that first whirring noise you hear is the camera ejecting the, the first protective cover on the film so that uh, your photos don't get exposed underneath. So now that that's done, your camera is ready to take a photo. So all you do is you just aim through the viewfinder at the back here, press the button, and there you go, it's as easy as that, your photo would shoot out the front. Now, the only real setting on the camera that you can change is this lighten and darken setting, so setting it to lighter will make your photos look lighter, setting it to darker will make them darker. Don't really bother changing it, uh, leave it in the middle and 99% of the time your photos will come out perfect. Um, so these were a fixed focus camera, which basically means that they had a single element lens that was fixed at a certain focal length so that basically no matter what you shot at everything was in focus. They have an aperture of about f13 uh, which is fixed also and the control of the exposure comes through changing the shutter speed. Later models such as the Pronto added a variable focus lens. So This lens was better than the standard in that it was a triple element with uh, the ability to change focus. Now, some of these variable focus SX-70s also included a rangefinder, such as this one. Uh, this is actually a very rare model of the Pronto that was branded by Sears, hence the brown colour scheme. Um, I don't usually get many of these models. In fact, I don't think I've actually sold one. Uh, I only have this one in my personal collection. Um, but it works in much the same way. Some versions of the Pronto didn't have the rangefinder, and so you would just sort of roughly estimate where you would expose, um, take your photo, and basically the, what, what the better lens did is it just made your photos a bit sharper, uh, especially at the closer distances. So this one would focus all the way down to three feet, whereas this one is pretty much in focus from four feet and onwards. So very easy to use. Um, they do not have a built-in flash, as what you would have had back in the day are these flash bars. So these were uh, sort of the 70s way of getting a flash. So this one um, has three bulbs left in it, and basically there were a plastic bar with five bulbs in the front, five bulbs in the back, and what you would do is just click it to the top of your camera and 
as you would take a photo, basically what the bar would do is send some electricity through a magnesium light bulb, which would then burn out and sort of uh, give, give a flash in your photo. So, as the magnesium filament in the bulb burnt, it produced a very bright light. The only downside to that is that once the bulb was gone, that was it. There was no going back. Um, these were a one-use only type of deal. Um, as technology improved and the ability to create electronic flashes um, improved as well, you could actually buy electronic flash units to put on one of these cameras. Um, so the flash bars are redundant these days. They don't even make them anymore. Um, this one does have a few empty bulbs in it left, but unfortunately the terminals have just corroded. Uh, so it doesn't actually want to work, uh, which is a pity. But the good news is that Impossible Project have made a new electronic flash for these cameras which you can buy and just pop on. Now, these cameras take SX70 film which is 100 ISO and it will give you the square picture with the white border around the edges uh, with the thicker bit at the bottom that you can write something in. You can also use 600 film in one of these cameras and you can do that in a few ways. One way is to use the Impossible Project flash set to half power and basically that will allow use of 600 film, uh, especially at night. The other way is you can use a filter, either over the lens or on top of the film itself before it goes into the camera. And basically what that does is 600 film, should you want to use it in one of these cameras, is 600 ISO. So basically it's fairly reactive to light. Now the SX70 film is only 100 ISO, which is slower. So basically these are meant to shoot on a slow film. So if you shoot on a fast film that reacts to light very quickly, your photos are going to end up looking very overexposed. So what the filter does is it helps filter out some of the light so that you get the correct exposure. You can buy pack film filters. Uh, ask me, I might have some in stock. If not, the Impossible Project does sell them. And you could also use the filter over the lens if you want to. Now the third way to use one of these six, uh, sorry, to use 600 film in one of these SX70 cameras is to modify the camera. Now, this is a service that I can provide and, and that I might actually start doing on all standard SX70 cameras. And basically what it involves doing is recalibrating the light meter. Now as I mentioned before, the way that it controls for the exposure is by adjusting the shutter speed. So what you can do is by calibrating uh, recalibrating the light sensor to make it more sensitive to light, it speeds up the shutter. And when you speed up the, the shutter speed, it allows you to use a higher uh, ISO of film because the faster the shutter is, the less light it gets through, and less light is what you need for the faster films. So the benefit of that is that the shutter speed has sped up if I do the permanent mod. And basically that means that in a lower light scenario, such as if it's very cloudy, your shutter speed's going to be firing faster than it would at standard, which means your photos are going to be more crisp and less, less chance of uh, having blur. And it's also better for capturing action shots. So if you want the mod done to your camera, I can modify your Polaroid SX70 to permanently take 600 film. Uh, the mod itself is not permanent. If for some reason one day you want to revert it back to the original film, uh, that's fine. I can just reset it back to normal. Um, the mod doesn't do any cosmetic change to the camera at all. All it does is it speeds up the shutter inside, giving you the ability to use the faster film. Um, I can easily perform the mod on any of the fixed lens cameras. So that is uh, the one step, uh, they were also called the, the thousand or the super color 1000 in some countries. I can do it on the one step plus, the time zero one step. I can do it on uh, the Polaroid the button. There's quite a, pretty much any SX, box type SX70 like this that has the fixed focus lens is very easy to mod. On cameras such as these, it's a lot harder to mod because of the more advanced lenses uh, and some of the more advanced electronics in other models. So if you do want the, the mod done, but you don't have one of the simpler ones and you have one of the variable focus lens models, uh, just let me know because I might not be able to do it to your camera. 
Now the last thing I want to mention is that Polaroid also made a sonar automatic focusing version of these. These look very similar to the Pronto, except they had this gold dish hanging off the side, uh, a fairly chunkier design, and basically they added sonar automatic focusing, which would basically use the exact same lens, but it would use a motor to spin the lens for you, allowing it to focus accordingly to your subject's distance away. So those are probably the, the best models in terms of image quality that they're going to produce, because it's going to be perfect focus every time. Um, so yeah, that pretty much does it. So the camera that popularized SX-70 film, uh, super cheap, cheerful, uh, and can be modded to 600 film. Thanks for watching, guys.